hello and welcome to Walking Through Worlds and what a beautiful day and beautiful to have you Margaret Hepworth and I'd like to do a a nice acknowledgement to our First Nations people and obviously the people of this land that I'm doing this recording from is the Turrbal and the Yagara people of this land. And we pay our respects to all the elders, past and present, and all those elders that come from every country to share this great land that we're all on here. And of course, our, our special respects and uh, to the Aboriginal people of this country and the Torres Strait Islanders, uh, with all of them being custodians for 65,000 years and here we are to share this great place with them and welcome Margaret Hepworth from Initiatives of Change. Yeah. You're in Melbourne. This is our first opportunity to do an online interview. Margaret, tell us a little bit about yourself and obviously we'll unpack about the IOFC, which is Initiatives of Change. Um, I heard about you through one of our interviewers, a, a gentleman called Peter Forde, in one of our earlier episodes. I asked him, is there any organisations in Australia that he knows that are working in the same sort of sphere that we want to work in, which is around the three stories of Australians? Mm -hmm. And he said, look, there is this body called uh, Initiates of Change, and they were another name, he said, and you can expand yeah. on that. And then... He said, I, but I don't know them, I know of them. Um, and hence, we connected to Barbara Lawler, yeah. one of your Brisbane uh, connections up here. And I had coffee with her and then she introduced me to you and here we are today. Beautiful. So how did you roll into the IOFC? Yeah. How did that become part of your life? Listen, there's a long, complicated story, Greg. I, I just, <laughs> I want to say woman, woman Decker. So, Wilma Decker, I am speaking to you from um, our beautiful centre called Arma. In in um, well, in actual fact, I'm on Wurundjeri and Boomerang land. Um, uh -huh. So, yeah, I, at the IFC centre, how did I connect to IFC? Goodness, I, I'll tell you a little of the IFC story and then bring yes. myself in. Um, Initiatives yep. of Change was begun by a man called Frank Bookman um, coming out of um, World War I when they decided that um, we should arm ourselves with morals rather than with guns. And it's a yes. beautiful concept and it created its own, you know, social movement because people mm. resonate to such a statement. And even... To Very pacifist, oh, pacif Beautiful, pacifist, beautiful. yeah. And even today, you know, with everything that's going on in our world, and if you look at Afghanistan, for example, you know, to yes. arm yourself, probably these days we'd say with values, to arm yourself yes. with values and reach very deeply for your, you know, your um, core values, to listen to your inner voice, you know, to, and I am um, IFC or Initiatives of Change, believes that you can change the world beginning with yourself, right? mm. beginning with yourself. So um, yes. it is an international movement. And in Melbourne in, a, in 1956, um, where I am, I wish you could see it. It is this stunningly beautiful um, home. Um, I've seen the pictures the mansion, online. Yes, the yes, best yes. Best story, the best philanthropic story I've ever heard. Where the man who owned this house, it was his family home, Cecil Mackay, um, and this mm -hmm. very small ragtag group of people trying to change the world for the better approached him and said, "Would you give us your house?" And he basically laughed them out of the place. And three weeks later, they were given an envelope with a key. He said, I've heard about your work. I know what you do. I know what you will be capable of doing if you have a centre from which to grow. And he gives wow. them this house. That's amazing. It, it is, that yeah. is amazing. And it's a story that more and more people need to hear because it really is a story that says if you have more than enough in this world, right? Yes. Yeah. And you can do remarkable things with it. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. Yeah. That is so good. And that's what we're going to unpack, all the beautiful things your organisation is doing. 
um, I, I, I was trying to articulate to one of my co-hosts um, who you were and what the organisation was about. And they said, well, give it to me simply. You know, what do they do? And I said, well, trust building. Yeah. You know, and these are from your site and we'll unpack that. Ethical leadership yeah. and sustainable living. Yeah. So trust building, you've got peace and social cohesion through trust and reconciliation. And we'll even unpack a lot about the peace because this um, this episode that we're doing with you today, we're launching on the day of International yes. um, Day of Peace. So this is very important. And then, of course, ethical leadership, you know, developing a leadership culture based on moral integrity, compassion and selfless mm -hmm. service and sustainable living, economic justice and environmental sustainability by transformation of motives and behaviour. Sounds really, really powerful. That's your focus areas, isn't that, it, that I saw? That is our focus areas. And I, I think you're probably adding community peace building in there. We, we have specific programs. Um, one, a beautiful prog program called Creators of Peace, which yes. is basically um, it unpacks or deconstructs peace and teaches yes. you how to find inner peace, how to bring that to your family, how to bring that to community which you would know as well as I do, Greg, that the minute you start doing that, there's a ripple effect, right? You know, yes. across the world. Yes. So create um, initiatives of change has this understanding that if you can transform yourself, right, then yep. connection to global transformation, right, inner change connects to global change. And it's a flow yes. that goes back and forth between the two. Yeah. So is that one of the connections, and I don't want to jump straight into the Gandhi experiment yeah. and something that I know you're yeah. passionate about, but you know that you hear this shortened version of his well-known yeah. quote, yeah. you know, be the, change. be the change, you know, be the change you want in the world. And it, and does it start from that inner wisdom? That It absolutely does because you, when, look, that phrase, be the change you want to see, and it's, it's a, it's not a passive statement. It's become too much yes. of a cliche, but oh, be the change. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, it means be it, do it, act it, live it now. It's an active yes. statement. And it's saying if you, whatever you think you want to change in the world. So, so I will speak to people, what's the one thing you would like to see change in the world? Yes. And people will say, oh, poverty, or they'll say um, equality, or they'll, and they go through any number, you know, stopping war. And so you say, well, yes. how do you become that? What does mm. that mean, really, to start here before you start telling everyone else what they should do and how they should do it? Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and you're and you're all part of the act. You've got to be part of the action. You can't stand yeah. back and say, "You need to change this. This needs to change." Yeah. Well, be be active in that. Yeah. You're right. Mm, so with beautiful. the Gandhi experiment, you're quite right. I um I I have been in education for about thirty years, and I was yes. the, like the deputy principal, head of campus of a, a an alternative school here in Melbourne. Um, yep. And I stepped out of that role because I was just feeling so challenged by the notion that, you know, if we say we teach peace and kindness and empathy and all these great things, how come the big wide world out there seem to be so much into over competitiveness and greed and mm. you know, me, me, me? And so I stepped out and I created the Gandhi experiment. Now that teaches non-violence as a conscious choice. And when most people hear that, they, their brains go straight to war and conflict. And, and that's yes. true, right? So teaching non-violence as a conscious choice is about teaching, um, you know, n not physically fighting. But then there's mm -hmm. your emotional violence, right? Your, yep. but, but it goes much, much deeper. So keeping people in poverty is a form of economic violence. Mm. Climate change is a violence to the planet. Yes. So we look at all forms of violence. But you're quite right because that idea of change begins with me, right? Yes. Be the change connects so beautifully to initiatives of change. So when I met 
initiatives of change, it was like, wow, this is, it's all the same thinking. And, you know, this, mm. this idea of um, working with yourself and at the same time stepping into mindful action to make positive change for the world. And the fact that you're also working across, um, well, I, I use the word intercultural because I, I, it so fits. I really struggled for a while with multicultural. Even though I worked around multicultural, I always felt it was not including our First Nations brothers and sisters. It wasn't mindful of you know people like myself and many others who's sixth generation convicts. You know, we we arrived here not knowing any of that when we were born. You know, we we weren't schooled on what occurred here in a violent way right. on this country. And part of what I wanted to do was heal those um, and build those bridges between those three silos, you know. And Noel Pearson, um, which I know you've got on your website, and I've uh, borrowed that statement too because I think he said, you know, Australia is a three-storey nation. You know, you have First Nations, you have the early settlers, uh, you know, those that came, and then those that came really post-war, yeah. whether it was World War One or World War II, yeah. you know, and then from then to today, you know, where we're getting yeah. Afghans and Syrians and, uh, you know, Congolese, the DRC and so on, who are now Australians, and I've met a lot of them, and they struggle with identity in Australia, and I think Australia suffers from its own identity crisis by not even embracing the First Nations yeah. story, yeah. which well, that's why I was excited when I saw your organisation is one that stretches out and and really um, embraces and tries to heal that divide as well, yeah. you know, which I think is fantastic in terms of peace. And we will interview your representative, Shane, Shane Charles, yeah. um, in a couple of weeks. So for all the listeners, we will have him on the, on the, on the episode to have a, have a good yarn and a good chat yeah. about. He's good at yarn, that's um, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I look forward to bit, meeting him. Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Initiatives of Change has been um, walking with First Nations peoples for decades, right? Yes. Very early on. Some of the earliest um, activists, such as Panti yes. Marge Chaka, she came and stayed here, right? She and her mother stayed here. And, um, and so there was this beautiful support around them from non-Indigenous yes. people decades ago, right? Mm. Now, only just last year, um, our membership voted um, at our national uh, gathering. They voted that they wanted to do more in the First Nations space, right? Yes. And so this year we've begun what we're calling it. It's our trust building project, and it is co-designed with First Nations leaders. Now, as we, uh, we launched it this year, and we had Thomas Mayer. Oh, do you know Thomas? No, you got not, to not know yet. Thomas. Thomas Mayer. Okay. He um, is an extraordinary man. He is a a voice of the nation right now, and he yep. is a signatory to the Uluru Statement from the Heart. Mm -hmm. And he helped launch um, our new trust building project this in March this year. And since then, Greg, the most magical things have happened. And it was nearly mm. every second day we were meeting someone new, people being drawn into this. Um, and then one day um, we had a very special uh, project happening here, a musical. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a group. They're called Inclusive Musical Theatre. And they were mm -hmm. rehearsing here. Or, but sorry, they were putting on an event and I was told, can you can you go and meet the didgeridoo player? Can you just look after the didgeridoo player? And so I went downstairs and found this guy with this big long thing sitting across his lap, and went, mm. that's the didgeridoo player. Well, that was the moment I met Uncle Shane Charles. Oh. That evening, we invited yep. him back for lunch to get to know him, and literally within the space of that one meeting, we were looking at each other. Myself, Sarah Narden, who heads, heads up our Trust Building Project, and Shane. And we were just going, what's going on? Something's happening here that's beyond us. 
And mm. we started talking about him moving in, coming to live here. And, you know, in the beginning, you're kind of laughing and saying it half as a joke, but in your head, you're going, no, this is real. And within mm -hmm. a very short space of time, Uncle Shane has moved in. He now lives here at the centre. He has yep. placed a cultural integrity across all our programs. Um, and we are developing what we're calling the first, it's the first People's Pathway Learning Centre when non-Indigenous learn. Mm -hmm. this, is, yep. this is reconciliation and healing and yet also a shift into learning cultural intelligences, cultural wisdoms and insights, cultural knowledge that we all should have known for the past, you know, 250 years um, and we're learning it now. Just on that uh, word reconciliation and a couple of interviews that we've had on our episodes so far, and of course one of our co-hosts is Yarika Bales, who is generationally a strong Aboriginal woman, mm -hmm. um, you know, about certain things. And she uh, said quite openly on, on the interview, I think she was interviewing me, so, and she said, I struggle with the word reconciliation mm -hmm. because in a lot of cases... Um, if reconciliation means, or one of its meanings is restoring broken friendships, she said, what we've really got to do is unpack that because in a lot of cases there weren't friendships and there never has been. And it's about building those friendships um, really from the ground up. You know, that, that real um, cognitive bias that sits there uh, under the, you know, the, the British settlement and what, what ancestors did and some of that that's been passed through and obviously the trauma that's been caused generationally on so many levels, you know, whether it was the stolen generation, whether it was the, the alcohol, the disease, the massacres, the genocides. Yeah. But she said reconciliation is, is a word that she's uncomfortable with using. And so we were saying bringing together, coming together, like it's the same word, but it just doesn't reek of that, of that, uh, you know, the, the reconciliation, yeah. it's about conciliation, you know. And mm. yeah, and I think, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know, I'm not harping on mm. about it, but I, I think there'll be a time as we go through this healing and unification of Australia, you know, and this sharing of stories, that we'll probably use the reconciliation word less because it, it tends to have been walking there for 20, 30 years. Yeah. And it's almost like it's not, it's not, getting the traction it needs. Yeah. It needs a new, fresh approach yeah. to bring all of these together. So hopefully we can all help that cause, you know, or yeah. help that, yeah. It's interesting, isn't it, because we've learned so much, you know, as, as we move forward and about language, right? And language yes. shapes the way we think and therefore the way we behave and respond. To mm. and, and you're quite right, Greg. Uncle Shane says exactly the same as what you just said. And so he mm. talks about the word reconciliation and makes us all think about it and yes. with it, right? And yet at the same time, he sits, um, he is the co-chair of Reconciliation Victoria. He yes. across 26 yes. reconciliation groups, right? So, yes. so on the one hand, we're going, oh, reconciliation, is that the right word? And yet we continue to use it because it's the official title of... Oh, groups. yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah, it's bit, it sort of it's what happens. It builds into a bit of an institution, mm -hmm. and um, up here, uh, a dear friend of mine, um, who is First Nation, he he was part of the Queensland Reconciliation, and he worked with it for a number of um, probably about a year. But you know, privately, he said to me, "I I, I worry about it because it's not really, um, you know, he left it because he felt let down. It's yeah. not. It it was important." when it was started 30 years ago, he understands, but he thinks it's changed. It's now just doing the movements, the things that it does without really thinking about how far has it progressed mm -hmm. and, and does it need a remodeling, a rebranding, a rethinking, you know? And I think it does. I think, um, so that's why, so as I said, Uncle Shane, you know, he questions the word too. Yes. And he looks at people's reconciliation action plans and he says sometimes they're not enough. 
The two tokenistic no, they're very tokenistic, aren't they? Going into a deeper yeah. meaning, and that's why yes. we've created something called it's it's the cultural intelligence immersion, and we're running two day mm. workshops at the moment. That yeah, cultural intelligence. Now listen to the difference when you hear yeah. that compared to reconciliation, right? And so we yeah. um, we take people on country. And, and a lot of the mm. learning is done on country, right? And then also yep. back here. But we will be running them online as well. So it's something people should watch out for. Yeah, no, that's it. great. And then the second one yeah. that I just wanted to share with you, instead of reconciliation, we're creating these um, trust-building modules, right? Now think yes. about that. Like what you just said about reconciliation, well, you had to have been friends to reconcile <laughs> Trust yes. building is one of the the foundations, the cornerstones of peace yes. building, right? So yes. trust building, these fractured groups, if they can learn to trust each other, then yeah. you can start moving forward together. And, yeah. and, and do you think the first part of that is about relationships and understanding at a deeper level um, more about uh, what's occurred to them and their families yeah. and the history and that, yeah. and they understand deeply about your own. So it's a two-way sharing. I, I think I like what I saw in your site. I mean, you always hear about the word truth-telling yeah. and you've got truth-listening. Truth-hearing. Truth-hearing, yeah. Yeah, yeah truth-hearing. Truth -hearing. And I thought, yeah, beautiful. You know, people go, oh, there's got to be a lot of truth-telling. What about truth hearing? Just sitting there, holding that space and listening yeah. Yeah. to the other um, person's view and perspective of what's occurred yeah. to them and acknowledging that. And that, that builds that relationship, doesn't it? Yeah. And then out of that comes that respect and that trust building yeah. and um, under, to move it forward. Understanding, right? That understanding that Yes. Comes. Absolutely. So you're quite right. Look, the trust building modules are being launched in, um, in only in a few weeks, in October and across November. And there's eight yep. modules and anyone yes. can join because they've all gone online, you know, like yep. everything's gone online. Yes. Yeah, all yeah, online. yeah. So I will send you the details. Anyone can join them. But you're right. Beautiful. There is the relationships. There's the idea of authentic leadership. You know, not leadership that yes. sets out to con or manipulate or dominate. No, authentic, it has moral integrity, moral integrity. and compassion. And yeah. then we look at, uh, there's a lot of different things, um, challenging conversations. Um, I will be running a collaborative debate. Now, collaborative yep. debating shifts the framework of, of adversarial debating. So you and I have come yep. together and we've got opposing views, right? Now, yes. normally, a debate sets us up to just yep. um, yell and scream at each other, undermine each other, call each other yes. names. Where have you heard that before? And <laughs> if I, Sounds like politics. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Instead, collaborative debating says, yes, we have different yes. viewpoints, but we want to solve this problem. So the win is us solving the problem and collaborating to do that, right? Oh, I like that. Other and than I win it so you, yeah. Did you do a lot of debating growing up I yourself? Knew, I did. I, I was a debater at school. I knew. I knew mm. how to do exactly mm. what I just said before. And how yes, to how to win, win the yeah. argument sort of thing, and, yeah. And top debaters are taught how yes. to do this. And yes. dare I say it, you, you might want to edit this bit, they often go on to be lawyers and politicians. <laughs> no, it's funny that I, I I left school early and I, I was never um, given the opportunity to debate and I learnt years later about the skills around the grammar, logic and critical yeah. thinking, which forms the sort of foundation of debating. But it was always about to win, mm -hmm. no matter which argument you're given, you can take either side. If you're a good debater, you can win either side yeah. because of your language, yes. your ability to manipulate um, the argument through your language and understanding about logical fallacies and all these other um, tricks of the mind that yes. politicians and lawyers use. Yeah, you know? Collaborative debating can, does not seek out any of that. Now, what's, what's beautiful at the moment, there is actually a lot of 
collaboration happening in in the legal profession. It is shifting, yes. but I think the more we reframe the traditional yep. structures that we have, the more that the peace building, the trust building, the you know all of these beautiful things actually have a, a chance of, of you know, mm. us moving forward in a whole different way. So we moved away from the Gandhi experiment conversation and we, we went off on different tangents, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, you, your book was about teaching our teenagers how to become global citizens yes. and collaborative debating. So, I mean, it's coming a full circle now. So how long ago was this book released? Oh, um, well, good question. One in 2016, one in 2017. And by that stage, yes. what, what happened was I was running... Um, global citizenship workshops across mm -hmm. across uh, Australia, particularly Melbourne, but across India. So I met yes. Initiatives of Change in 2014 yep. and they sent me to India to a conference. Mm -hmm. Once there, I just fell in love with the entire IFC. I came back and started working with IFC Indian educators. And they sent me across the country running global citizenship workshops. Right? It was just extraordinary. Um, and when I returned, I found an email in my inbox and it was from a publisher saying, you know, we've heard about your work. Um, would you like to write it all up in a book? And you know, when you nearly press delete, it's just, you know, scam, spam. And I, read, I had to read it a few times and go, well, actually, they <laughs> do know who I am. <laughs> yeah. They really wanted the work published. So it is wow. called the Gandhi Experiment, yeah, teaching our teenagers how to become global citizens. I've run this work across Pakistan, um, into Indonesia. Yes. Now, in Indonesia, it was run with 18 to 35-year-olds, not, not young wow. secondary students. Mm. The power of that was extraordinary because they were coming in from 13 different countries Right, meeting in Indonesia at an Asia Pacific Youth Conference, an IFC Youth Conference, and yes. they brought real life problems with them. Mm, mm, and so, mm. a young man from Kashmir was able to be given tools and strategies he could take back to Kashmir to work with. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's it's powerful stuff. Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's incredible. Well, while we're on the peace building work, um, mm. I, I'd like to hear a little bit about the peace circles, yeah. you know, the women's initiative yeah. that you've, um, you, you're doing and that work. Um, explain to our listeners what that's about. Mm. I love circle work and I love that our Indigenous brothers and sisters have been doing this for, oh, you know, yeah. 100,000 years or more. And we're just all getting excited now that we can participate and use the circle. And I've had the pleasure of using it for two years with youth and then with men. And then to hear you're doing a women's initiative. Do you want to unpack that? Yeah, sure, I'd, I'd love sure. our listeners to know more about yeah. that. So, well, I'm going to tell you two things, slightly different but connected. Um, so Creators of Peace is primarily for women. Um, and, yes, yes, it's run as um, they call them... Um, peace circles and it, it can be run over three days quite intensively or the, there's one coming up it's online again anyone mm -hmm. can contact us and join um, and that is run over seven weeks like for a couple of hours an evening over sorry mm -hmm. once every seven weeks and it as I said earlier it unpacks peace Right, so it sort of it, it asks, well, what does it what does it mean to be a peacemaker? It mm. helps you examine inner peace and how to achieve that. It um, it talks about forgiveness, which is one of the you know, again that's a crucial you know foundation, right? To be is that like letting go? You know that whole statement of letting yeah. go of past it's things that are holding you back. Yeah. Whether it's yeah, yeah relationships or but it unpacks how you forgive others and how you can forgive yourself. Yes. So, so mm. in my work, I actually use Gandhi's prayer for peace as a way of looking at how you um, forgive. You know, 
even countries, right? Yes. Then, yes. then it might be in your family. And once you understand it, you take it inwards because we all argue with parts of ourselves. You know, sometimes mm. we sit there and we just can't believe we did this or said this or and we're so ashamed of ourselves and we can't move beyond it. And this is a way of teaching you how to forgive that part of yourself. It's interesting because when I learnt about my convict past and it wasn't the convict mother because she had a son on the boat uh, but when he was given land and then when you unpack that that his land that he was given was stolen land but then to find a book uh, called the Vandemonian Wars because I'm a Van, De Van Diemen's Land Tasmanian oh, yeah. convict um, I'm just I'm bringing this up in terms of peace because I know when I um, discovered that my great 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 grandfather five generations ago had actually been responsible for some of the massacres in some way we don't know if he was actually a gun bearer but we know i know from some historical work that nick Brody, an author uh, did a, a, in a book called vandemonium wars my great great grandfather is named in that oh, book right but not as a perpetrator but obviously as part of the military and the soldiers yeah. but he was just a farmer and, but he went out to clear the land. And they called them the Frontier Wars and the Black yes, Wars. Yes. But internally, I, I reconciled that myself very quickly by saying, look, that's five generations ago. It's also the spirit of the time with what he didn't know. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he didn't understand at all mm -hmm. the, the situation that the mm -hmm. British Empire had put him in. They'd given him land he didn't even know about Britain. I mean, he was born on a boat at Norfolk Island, you know. So, But you imagine you're then told to go out and clear the land. But I meet a lot of people who've been in Australia and they, they say, oh, I'm really guilty. Don't, I, don't want to talk about, I don't want to talk about the massacres or genocides. I hold that guilt. Yeah. And I go, no, but you shouldn't hold that guilt. No, like you need to acknowledge this occurred. Acknowledge That's the first thing. Yeah. 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 And is that making peace? So I, I, I had probably internally made peace. But that's what we need to teach people too, isn't it? That on both of the, these stories, yes. we've got to make peace with that and you know, not be angry or not be shamed or not be disappointed. Yes. Just try to figure out a way to come to peace and in, with that. In fact, this is, this is really important what you're describing. It's it, the human psyche, right? If we yep. do, like, like you're quite right, we need to acknowledge the reality of it, right? We can't deny yes. it and learn yeah. and be prepared to learn and be open to that truth hearing. Yes. You can feel guilty for this for a short amount of time. There's nothing wrong with feeling yes. sad or overwhelmed or guilty for a short amount of time. Unfortunately, if you stay in that overwhelm, that sort of, that guilty place, you won't become yes. useful. In fact, it's almost the opposite will happen. And often, particularly mm. young people, when they're in overwhelm, they arc up, right? So what we do yes. is shift them. And it's through these beautiful creators of peace or life matters, these amazing programs that we do, the trust building, you shift them to yep. a place of hope and it's always solution focused. This is the biggest thing the media gets wrong. The media just overwhelms us. Not, not you guys, not people like you. <laughs> the mainstream media <laughs> yes, overwhelms yes. us with negativity and it has this yes. shocking effect, right? It's either mm. apathy or arcing up. Whereas if you yes. constantly say, yes, that happened, it's true, it's real, but we're moving to a place of hope and being solution-focused, I can't mm. tell you, I watch this with young people all the time. They shift and they move to a place of mindful action and they want mm. to become engaged. They find this incredible different sort of energy and they want to, they're the givers, right? The people who want yes. to put in, they want that reality there to change. And now they've given some tools for how to do it. But, yeah. So that's, that's effectively what you do with the peace circles. Now, what about... We were discussing also, um, there's a name change on your website. It's called Australian Sharing a New Story. But now you've renamed it 
because it's gone global advocating uh, a new and story. Is that right? Is that what it's is, called? Is the global yep. version and Australian sharing a new story. Yes, yeah, still. It's very much what you're talking about, walking in three worlds. Um, and so particularly mm-hmm. if you apply that to Australia, it's exactly what yes. you were describing before. It's saying, well, we seem to have this, you know, these three narratives, right? There's the yes. first people's narrative, which you are quite rightly saying we're, we're still learning, honestly, we're still learning. Um, but for them, they've known that narrative for, you know, 65,000 years and more. Then they, well, some have lost it and rediscovered it. Lost yeah. It and yes, That's very, it. very yes. sad. Then there's the, um, the invaders or the colonists. And yes. That narrative and the impact on the people who, you know, the traditional custodians and the land, not the people and the land, right? And then there's the migrant narrative. Yes. And so that is saying, just like you're doing with this podcast, is saying, mm. well, how do we now capture those stories, hear them, understand them, listen to each other, right? Yes. Yes. And then suddenly become aware that we actually do share, you know, our stories are different, but there's these common threads. And if we're really listening yes. deeply, we're listening to the voice of humanity. And how do we capture yeah, that that's... voice? Yes. And then move forward with a much, much yeah. better future. I, 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 I'll just add on to that. Um, you know, when we always think of the first settlers and, you know, my mind always was always going to 1788. You know, this is yeah. this sort of moment yeah. in time. Yeah. But a beautiful, and this author, he is going to be on one of our upcoming episodes, yeah. this Nick Brody. Right. He's written a series of books. And I, I was in the library and there was one there called 1787. Yeah. And what he deals with is the 300 years before 1788. Yeah. And, yeah. and it is a wonderful story. I mean, what I got out of it was realising that colonisation didn't happen just in that one day on the 26th of January. It was an evolution that was occurring over a long period of time. Like, I mean, we're talking over 300 years, you know, in in terms of Europe, uh, not discovering, but sort of exploring and then realising there's this unknown place. You know, it's offensive to call it discovery when you know there's people been here for so long. But, yeah, those two worlds colliding, you know, all those many worlds, whether it was French, Portuguese or Dutch or, mm. you know, it just happened to be the British that arrived at that point with a particular agenda. Yes. Um, and so it's fascinating that we shouldn't get... That's why Stan Grant, I love his writing about, and I've mentioned this before on podcasts, he always says about Australia Day, once we can all learn each other's narratives, we can really heal that. Yeah. You know, it's not about the date. It's about like trust in those stories and knowing enough about each other to be able to say who are we as Australians, Mm -hmm. you know, and that we're all Australians now, Yes, you know. That's one of the most beautiful um, factors or or I think tools of um, initiatives of change is the story. Yes. And they create this trusted space where people can share their story, right? And some people say, yes. this is the first time anybody's heard my story. And then it's, Beautiful. it's just held, right? So that happens in Creators of Peace. Um, the other thing, um, initiatives have changed, teachers, if you like, or practices, is quiet time. And we don't find that yes. a lot. I think mindfulness is coming into our schools now. But that mm. quiet time where every single day you just stop and you, you know, you might have one question in your head. It's not, it's not the same as praying. It is quiet time. And all of a sudden you're accessing your inner voice of guidance. It's quite a fascinating. Beautiful. It takes you into a bit of a Beautiful. esoteric world in a way, but, you know, quite. Can I tell you something really exciting happening tonight? Because we're talking about circles. Yes. Um, so, yes, we have our Creators of Peace circles. Tonight we're having our first women's yarning circle and um, Mm -hmm. it was going to be here at Arma. You know, 30 women were coming together, um, but it's online. (laughs) But it's being led by Tracy Evans and she is one of the directors of the First People's Assembly of Victoria. 
And, um, and the mm. beauty of this, remember I said Arma, our centre, is on Wurundjeri and Boomerang land. Some people say that's yes. contested land. Some people say it's shared. Tonight, we mm. will have welcome, um, welcome to Country from Auntie Caroline Briggs and Auntie Di Kerr. That is Boomerang and Wurundjeri coming together to do the welcome. Mm. And that is that beautiful. Yeah, that is significant, and that is you know very. It's just moving. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Is the Yanti Briggs related to um, AB Original Briggs, the rapper? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They might be. They might be. <laughs> He might be. You should ask her. Ask her. But now that when you're saying this is tonight, because we'll be um, broadcasting this episode next Tuesday oh, on the 21st of September. Now this is coming right back to. There will be more of these yarning circles, yes. I would assume, once will, you've done this. Yes, yeah, so. will be running men's circles and inviting people. Yeah. So there's a lot. So people need to go to your site yes. and subscribe yes. and be part of your um, what's going on. Yes. Tell me about International Day of Peace because that's, you know, one of the, the – here we are. This episode will be released on the 21st of September. Yes. And what's that about? Unpack that for me. Um, what, what does it represent? Oh, well, on the International Day of Peace, uh, it, so it represents a global vision. And it represents a yes. global vision that anyone on the planet can actually contribute to even if it's mm -hmm. in the smallest possible way, which might, you know, might be making, making up with your brother or sister. Um, mm. But it is, it's one of those days, Greg, where, you know, for one day of the year to, for people to really focus in and imagine what would it look like? What could it be like? It is possible. My right? global peace yes. is possible. Now, mm -hmm. I would hope that we don't leave it at that one day of the year that we, you know, we find our ways to, to take it across the yes. year. Yes. But it is, it's one of those days of inspiration, hope, but also action. You should be keying in on that day to all the things that will be offered and then say to yourself, well, what is it that I'm really passionate about, really, you know, would love to join in on? to continue mm. this journey and take action on it. Mm. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I'll, I'll reflect on the 21st. I definitely will. I think it's a great initiative. Yeah. And and I, I, I've really enjoyed talking with you and meeting you again. And uh, and, I, and this won't be the last. <laughs> we'll have many conversations. Um, and obviously we'll have Shane, um, yeah. uh, Charles, um, is there any relation to Jack Charles, by the um, way, the actor? Look, I think they're still trying to find out because Uncle Jack has only just found out his own heritage. He, yeah, that's he right. He came here to Armour. Um, Uncle Jack is just gorgeous. And he came and had lunch with us. And he is so excited yes. about what we're doing and wants to join in. Um, but he yes. had only just found out then who his father was. So mm -hmm. His story is, you know, red. Oh. I'm reading his book, um, Born Again Blackfella. Yeah. A very and he good is book. amazing. He's a, just a beautiful yeah. man. So they're, they're still finding that connection. Um, no, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And then we will interview Barbara Lawler, yes. who I met up here in Brisbane. Yes, we'll do a face to face with I've Barbara. A, but with Barbara. Yeah, Bar Barb's amazing. Barb's just been yeah. on the Star of Taroon Walk. She can tell you. Look yes, that. and that's what we're yeah. going to talk about. Yeah, <laughs> Sounds I've good. I've got to just throw in tailoring tales is something we're starting, and that is working with Afghan women. And oh, yeah, beautiful. so you can imagine, you know, the absolute crisis, and mm. and Afghan people here are just so distraught and distressed. And again, this is helping them find a way. Um, you know, to deal with that stress, to deal with um, yes. conflict transformation and, and to find yes. that inner peace and family peace here in Australia, right? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. really good work. Yeah. I, There's a lot. All right. Well, I'm, I, there is so much and it, it's so good. We could talk for hours, but I, I know that we, um, we will have another opportunity down the track 
um, to do another yeah. um, episode. Can I leave you with one I thought? thank you so much. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, and please. This was no. right at the beginning. You were talking about Gandhi and you, that phrase, "Be the change you want to see in the world." And in actual fact, it turns yes. out he did not say that. Somebody else, and yeah, I heard his that. nephew, created it. But mm. what he did say was, "If you can change yourself within, the world around mm-hmm. you will change." Mm. That's, mm. <laughs> that's powerful yeah. and it and it bounces back to your inner wisdom at the heart of yeah. everything that you're yeah. doing that's right. yeah well done well i think this is a great segue and um again i so much appreciate your time today and coming on to the episode of walking three worlds yes. which our, our listeners can hear us at uh, or see us visit us at um, www.walkingthreeworlds.com.au and your website is www.iofc.org. Pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. You. And um, and you can, and the Australian side, of course, it'll if you're in Australia, it'll probably take you to the AU side. Or should you do au.iofc.org? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, if they look up Initiatives of Change Australia, Google it, it'll yeah. take you to the yep. – they need to go to the Australian – Site to see all these Site. things that are happening that we've just... Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, really. really good. We will talk uh, more. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right? <That's> your <laughs> have a beautiful you. week. Yeah, you have a Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um.